Hi, everybody. Welcome to another WPLN Facebook Live. WPLN is known as the Women's Public Leadership Network, and we are a 501c3 national nonpartisan nonprofit organization that is dedicated to inspiring, educating, and training women to run for all levels of office in the United States. My name is Emma Ruskamp, and I'm a fellow with WPLN this year. I'm a student at the University of Nebraska Omaha, and I'm excited to welcome everyone to this month's Tips from the Trail program. We are joined today by Lara Marastani, who is the founder and CEO of Prospera Insights. For the last 18 years, Lara has served in leadership and management roles across sectors with a strong focus on building successful strategies that align with market dynamics. Lara, I know your experience expands far beyond what I described. Could you introduce yourself and share more about what originally got you interested in your career field? Hi, everybody, and hi, Emma. Good to see you again. Excited to be here, finally, on a WPLN Tips uh, from the Trail. So I'm Laura Maristani. As Emma said, I'm the founder and CEO of Prospera Insights, and I've been around the D.C. area for about 18 years. I started in D.C. working on Capitol Hill. I was fortunate enough that my mom was able to find a paid internship program because, of course, if you know, you're going to go to law school, you have to study political science and what better place to go and practice your skills in Capitol Hill. So I was able to come to D.C. for a semester. And after that, fortunate enough to be offered an opportunity to come work for the congressman. And I've been here ever since. I actually met my husband two weeks in. So um, excited to um, be here and talk a little bit more about the journey since then. Um, I have been able to been fortunate enough to work across the nonprofit, private, philanthropic, um, and now having my own startup uh, and working on a technology startup as it goes. Um, so really excited to be here, Emma. Thank you. One thing I really appreciate about WPLN is the opportunity to network with incredible women across the United States. Have you had any mentors that have helped you along the way? I have had many mentors, um, and I think one of the things that they have taught me the most is about being supportive and pulling others along with you. So one of the things, one of the distinguishing characteristics of a lot of the folks that were influential in my path is that a lot of them were very secure in their positions. So they were people that were across sectors, but they didn't feel threatened by other people coming behind them. They were people that really wanted to create a collaborative world that really thought that more women um, and more, uh, a lot of my mentors, Latina women, were engaged in our realm, had opportunities to grow, had the resources to be able to do that and, and you know, push, push through. And I wouldn't say... Uh, you know, there's so many names of folks that I can think of, but truly a lot of the women in my path that really pushed for collaboration, that really pushed for, uh, you know, just supporting other women to, to rise and grow. But I think the most important part of all of it is, is, is the women next to you. So it is those networks when you're having when you're up high, but also when you're down low, something that I have recently become much more in, in tune with was recently my most recent job before launching my business was for a technology startup that collapsed out of nowhere. And we were riding really high. It was one of the best jobs I have ever had in my entire career. And Literally in the middle of the night, they're like, we're furloughing 100% of the staff and your checks are going to bounce. And in that moment, when something like that happens, right, there are a lot of different reactions. Everybody's curious what's going on. We're still finding out what exactly happened. But through it all, the women next to me, those networks of support, people that have been um, 
around, I wouldn't say necessarily mentors up until that point, but really folks that stood up and said, Laura, what can we do? How can we support you? How can we support your business? Really standing up and showing up in the most authentic of ways. And during that moment, I think another piece too, for all, for everybody listening, I'm trying to be also very uh, blunt and upfront in terms of what the characteristics look like. But when you have a moment like that in your career, silence can be so loud and you will never forget who are the people who did not respond to that email. So I'm fortunate that a lot of my people responded and that through many different avenues, I have been able to find ways to work with um, and to reconnect with. And so those are my tribe right now. They're also folks that are working very closely on their own endeavors. And so we find opportunities not to only go on that walk and talk and have a conversation about how life is going from, you know, from the kids to the business to all the things. But those are the moments that really matter. Those are the people that really matter. Look for them and follow what your heart tells you. Because a lot of that too is when you walk into a situation, even if you're walking into getting a mentor at work or finding someone in your path that you think is influential enough and they're offering to help you, you have your radar, follow it. When something feels yucky, find a way to let it go. You don't need that in your life. Follow your heart. Make sure that the situations that you're in, the conversations that you're in make you feel good. And one day at a time, I promise you that that's going to be the path that is going to take you to where you want to go next. That's great advice. Thank you. Considering that Hispanic Heritage Month was earlier this month, I wanted to ask if your Hispanic heritage has influenced your career. And if so, could you explain how? In all the ways. <laughs> so I am uh, the daughter of Cuban immigrants that were forced to leave the island um, when the dictatorship uh, took over. And, you know, so much, obviously, history, trauma, all of the things that come from having to abandon everything that you know because of a ruthless dictator definitely has had a very large impact in how I navigate the world, how I make decisions, who I, who I engage with, um, and, and the issues that I want to promote into the future. I think particularly now, right, as the world becomes increasingly polarized and we are seeing the rise of a definite strand of authoritarianism across the globe, that history, it, I'm, it's so anchored in me. I think as the eldest granddaughter, uh, my grandparents did a really good job at making sure that I understood how socialism has failed a lot of our communities, um, what authoritarianism looks like in all its shapes and forms. And I have had the privilege of being able to follow uh, paths in my career that allow me to kind of lean into that and lean into what I believe uh, a truly healthy democracy should look like. So I would say that in fact, in all of my jobs in one way, shape or form, that spirit to empower communities, to make sure that people are voting and that we have access to voting rights, all the way to having healthier movements on both the right and the left. When I was a funder, when I was in philanthropy, I was able to support seed uh, funding to try to combat some of the very uh, threats to other authoritarianism that we were seeing in America. And so I think in, in every thread, that history, what my family went through, and in many ways, what I feel that I have gone through because I was um, kept out of my heritage. I have not, I've never been able to travel to Cuba. I, I have family in Cuba, right? All of those pieces that I, that were taken from my family that were taken from me. So even though I didn't personally live the experience in that way, I certainly have a lot of the heritage and carry that with me, um, in every, in everything and that I do and all the decisions I make. That's great. As you reflect on your career and your upbringing and the many roles you have served, 
Could you share what accomplishments you are most proud of? I think I would, I, I, I can talk about some specific examples, but I think right now my head is also in just the resilience that I didn't know I had. Getting to this particular year, which has been very transformative for myself and my family, not by choice, but I'm glad that the things that have happened this year have happened because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be pushing myself to do things that I would have never done before. Um, and one of those things is an idea that I have been noodling on for over five years. And now that I have a little bit of uh, brain space to pursue it, I'm really excited. Of course, getting to this point had to come with losing your job overnight, <laughs> literally overnight, losing a community of people that were just amazing. In, in, and But then at the same time, finding kind of that strength to be able to push forward. Now, to be more specific, one of the, one of the things I'm really proud of is actually WPLN. So when I was uh, back uh, uh, in philanthropy, I had met Larissa, who is the head of WPLN, and it was... It was a moment where a lot of new ideas were coming out of different ecosystems. And what WPLN was proposing to do, I felt was really important for the system. And thankfully, with support from the foundation, we were able to give seed funding to, to kind of seed what now almost five years later is WPLN. And just last week, we were at the leadership dinner and seeing that group of women and seeing all of the leadership development and all of the organizations on the ground that are doing just amazing work, engaging and empowering women. I, I cried a little, I, I thought, wow, you know, you never see it in that moment, but I've been so fortunate and blessed to be able to see a lot of different organizations that I have worked with from day one kind of grow into what they are now. I've seen more dollars come into a lot of the work that I had seed funded when I was in some of those roles. I have seen change. Another project that I helped seed fund on uh, and create uh, to help um, build more capacity in Congress also growing. So there are so many examples and I can't take credit for them, but just seeing them makes me immensely proud. And it also every day makes me very grateful that I have been able to follow a career and follow a path that has enabled me to engage with so many in, important causes that are transforming communities across the country. That's great. Being a woman in the political wor world comes with its own sets of challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a Hispanic woman in this field and any advice you have for women who want to get involved? Yeah, I think what the, so many things and our paths are all so different. I, in particular, you know, I am very loud. I am very active. And so one of the things I discovered early on and is that we don't really have a lot of tools to communicate across difference. So being a woman in a lot of those spaces, a woman and a Latina and then Cuban, it, you know, with Puerto Rican heritage, it's, it's all the things. Um, I see it in my kids too. We often walk into rooms assuming that our differences are one thing, whether they're red and blue, right? Or they're women, you know, female and male. And the fact is that in our culture, we haven't really engaged with tools to bridge those differences that actually embrace the complexity of who we are. And so I think, and I actually have, have been fortunate enough to invest also some power into figuring that very thing out. But that, those are the pieces where I have experienced a lot of the challenges throughout my career because I show up in certain ways and there's a lot of assumptions that people make around how I am engaging with them. Again, because I'm very direct. I'm loud, right? I'm moving my hands all over the place and you think I'm coming for you. Those kinds of dynamics. Um, but I have learned a lot of uh, a lot of different ways to sort of engage with folks in that 
um, difference. And that I think has been helpful being very open and vulnerable about um, what you're trying to achieve and how you're trying to achieve it. Walking into a space, I feel like as women, we have to spend a little bit more time describing that uh, and our assumptions and also our background so that we unfortunately are taken seriously in a lot of those rooms. But again, I have been fortunate enough to be in spaces where people have been incredibly welcoming. Um, there have there has been intentionality in supporting women and elevating women. Again, look at groups like WPLN. And where it doesn't work, then we just create groups of all women <laughs> and we go and we do it. So I think there are there many different ways, um, many different ways that this has interacted with my path in my career. And then remember, as besides from being in politics and in the policy realm, I have been in the technology space, which again is very uh, male dominated. And a lot of those rooms, you know, you walk in, you're the only woman, you're the only Latina woman, you kind of have an accent, you're trying to, you know, engage. And so for me, I've always been very authentic. I've always been in an, in a way defiant of the of the expected norms. And I tell other women it's achievable. I think from that space too, and it may not be feasible for everybody, but I can tell you, and this is something that I like to tell folks about is I am a mom. I have a, an awesome partner at home. I did all the things while growing my career. There was never a pause to do any of it. And in my mind, I truly believe that with a supportive network, and that doesn't always look like family. Sometimes you have to make your own family with your friends or the networks that you build. I am fortunate enough to have that community around me. It really does take a village to do it, but I am blessed because I have never needed to stop all of that to do one thing or choose one instead of the other. I have been able to lean into all of them. And so I think it's achievable for women out there who think, well, if I want to have kids, maybe I can't do this other thing. And in particular in the political realm, because, right, it's so difficult. It, it's such a demanding job to engage with. And I truly believe that with the right support systems, with organizations like WPLN that are really being intentional about how we support women, how we create those networks around them so that they too can feel empowered to do it all, all that they want to do, not all the things, what they want to do. It's, it's achievable. And there are organizations and people and family that want to help through that. And again, I've been blessed enough to be able to count on that throughout my path. Yeah, I love what you said about embracing the complexity of who we all are. I think that's great and profound advice. And it looks like our audience does have a question for us today. What tricks have helped you manage the negativity that is so often felt in government and politics? I don't know if they're tricks, but I truly believe that we have commonality. Yes, as humanity, we care about very similar things. We want our families to be healthy. We want to be able to be healthy ourselves. We want to be able to have access to opportunity and prosperity in our communities. There are, there are a lot of things that we have in common. We choose sides for different reasons. Some of us were born into the side. Um, some of us, we grew into it as, as we kind of uh, grew. And I think it is not to say, because I think a lot of people say, oh, we're all similar in some ways. I actually think we're all different in all the ways. But from a policy standpoint and from a community standpoint, we do somewhat care about the same things. So for me, it's creating an environment where there is space for that difference. 
always creating a table, a room where people feel like they belong, like they can belong. And I think even, you know, just in the way that I engage, because I love to talk to people and I'm a total extrovert. I totally get energy when I am in those rooms and engaging with folks. I have really just tried to create that kind of space um, through through being me, <laughs> just because I, I, I thrive in that environment. That's why I want people to be together. I want people to be able to communicate with each other. And often I am always the only me of my political leaning in rooms with people that have very different views from mine. So I think just kind of embracing that we're different and finding the right tools to have conversations about that difference is, is healthy. It's important to democracy for us to be able to have those conversations. And then one other thing that I always uh, tell people is I actually never considered myself a political animal. I think a lot of us we talk about politics in this macro realm. I think I am much more of a policy being. I want change. I want to make sure that our systems are serving our communities in the best way possible. And I don't think that's feasible if we don't engage in the different conversations because I don't have all the answers. I don't think any one person has all the answers to how we fix our education system, how we fix our healthcare system. We need to collaborate. And so being able to have that shared space for um, constructive dialogue and also to debate is, is important. Um, and there are different ways. Again, I think if you're intentional about it, it's completely feasible to create those spaces in your day to day. It can go all the way from the conversations that you have at home with your brothers um, all the way to how you engage with members of Congress. How do you bring together groups of women from across the political aisle? Yeah, I think being your authentic self while leaving room for engaging dialogue is great advice. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to thank you, Laura, for joining us today and being so open about your experience, as well as imparting some advice and tips for women who are considering entering a similar career. We really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. And if there are any additional questions for us, feel free to email at hello at womenspublicleadership.net. And don't forget to stay tuned for ne next month's Tips from the Trail. Thanks. <laughs>